Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you the general setup for a grouping matching game. This is from the June 2000 LSAT, it's the fourth game, which I number as Prep Test 51 and a half because it's right between Prep Test 51 and Prep Test 52, although it's technically unnumbered by LSAT. This is the game about recycling centers. We have three recycling centers, each of which will recycle at least two types of material. So I've laid out two different spaces above each of the recycling centers, and I've also written down that there's a maximum of three, meaning that there's a max of three types of material for each of the three centers. Now, they give us some rules that I've diagrammed here, which I'll explain. They tell us that any center that has wood also has newsprint, so anything that has wood then we'll also have newsprint as well, so it'll have both wood and newsprint. So if center one has wood, it will have wood and newsprint. If center three has wood, it'll have wood and newsprint, etc. Now it tells that any type of material that two has, one also has. So I've drawn an arrow here establishing that if something's at two, then that same thing will also be at one. However, this is not necessarily the reverse. There may be a type of material that one recycles that two does not recycle. Now you might ask, how is this possible if both of them have two types of material? Remember, it's at least two. There's a maximum of three. So maybe center one has something that center two does not. Although, of course, anything that two has, one will have as well. Make sure not to reverse that rule. Then we have that only one center has plastic, so I put down one P, meaning there's exactly one plastic being allocated among the three different centers here. And then finally, they tell us that the center that has plastic does not have glass. So if something has P, then it does not have G. So P and G will not appear together. So wherever that one plastic goes, we know that glass will not go there. So this right here is our general setup for the game. Of course, we'll do a lot more work over the course of the game as we get into the specific questions. However, there is one quick little inference you can make and it comes from combining the rule that there's exactly one P and the rule that whatever two has, one has. Whatever's on two will also be on one, so whatever's on two will have to go at least twice. However, we know that plastic cannot go twice, it only goes once. So therefore, we can infer that we will never have plastic on two, because if plastic were on two, it'd have to be on one as well, which would require having two plastics, which is impossible given that we only have one. So this right here is the general setup, not a whole lot of inferences to make up front. We'll be doing a lot more work over the course of the game as we get into the specific questions. So let's start off with question number 18 now that we've taken care of the initial setup for this game. Number 18 is a typical orientation question, which means that we're going to want to take one rule or inference at a time and apply that rule or inference to all five choices, checking for violations. And of course, we can typically expect to eliminate only one choice for each rule, which is why it's often better to start with an inference if you can, because since inferences result from the combination of multiple rules, using an inference rather than a simple rule will often, or at least sometimes, allow you to eliminate more than one answer choice. So here our real only inference here is that we never have plastic on two. So let's check through all five choices looking for plastic appearing on two, because if it does, we can eliminate that choice since we'll know it's not a valid scenario. Scanning through the choices here, it appears that only choice E has plastic on two, so we can eliminate E for that reason. Let's pick out another rule here. We know that whatever's on two has to be on one, so let's look for violations of that. Scanning through the choices, we see that choice A is fine on this issue because newsprint and would both appear on two, and both of them appear on one as well. Don't reverse that rule and think that since plastic is on one, it has to be on two as well. That would be an incorrect assumption. So scanning through the choices, we see that choice C has tin on two, but does not have tin on one. That's unacceptable, so for that reason, we can eliminate choice C. Let's pick out another rule. We know that P and G can never be at the same center. Scanning through all five choices, the choices that remain anyway, A, B, and D, we see that choice D has both glass and, glass and plastic on one. That's unacceptable, so we can eliminate D. We're now down to A and B. Looking at those two remaining, we can use the rule that whenever we have wood, we have to have both wood and newsprint. Looking through A and B there, we see that choice A violates this 
because we have wood on three, but do not have newsprint on three. So for that reason, we can eliminate choice A, and V is our answer for number 18. Next, number 19. This question is asking us for a complete and accurate list of centers, any one of which could have plastic. Well, we have our initial inference telling us that two cannot have plastic because whatever's on two is also on one, and we can only have one plastic in the game. So any choice mentioning center two can automatically be eliminated. This gets rid of both C and E. We're down to A, B, and D. So the question is, is it one only, three only, or could both of them recycle plastic? Well, let's think about this for a moment. There's no reason to think that either one or three couldn't have P. So for that reason alone, I would pick D and move on, and it turns out that D is correct. Both one and three could recycle plastic. If you had the extra time later and wanted to more thoroughly verify this choice, you could do a couple of things. One of them is looking back at our correct answer for 18, which was choice B. We saw there that it was possible to have plastic on three, so for that reason alone, you can eliminate choice A, since we know that center one is not the only one that could recycle plastic. Then additionally, let's, we could, you could actually test it out. We could have two different variables on two, meaning we have exactly two variables on two, and then have three variables on one. So we could have P on one in that case, it would work out perfectly fine. We could have two different random variables on two and then those same two variables on one, works out not a problem. So for that reason, we can eliminate B as well. Center three is not the only one that could have plastic and D is our answer for 19. Next number 20, if center two had three types of material, what must center three have? Well, if center two had three different types of material, that means that center one would also have to have three types of material since whatever's on two is also on one. So if two had three different things, even if it had made up variables like A, B, and C, center one would also have to have A, B, and C. So center one would have three types as a result as well. So if center two is having three and center one's having three, that means they're identical. They're gonna have the exact same types of material. So because center two cannot have P in general, center one cannot have P either. And since all five of these have to go at some point, based on the second sentence of the initial prompt of this game, of the initial paragraph, for that reason we can infer that P will have to go on three. So right there we have our inference that's sufficient to solve this question. Choice C is our answer to number 20, plastic. Next, number 21, if each center has exactly three types of material, so all of them are gonna have exactly three, and this kicks in our inference from the previous question. If we can't have P on two, then we certainly can't have P on one, so P is going to have to go on three, and this stems again from the fact that if two and one both have three types of material, they're going to have exactly identical types of material, and since P can't be on two, P is not going to be on one either, and it's going to have to be on three as a result. So if P is on three, that means that we can't have G there, since P and G can never go together, which means that G is going to have to go on both two and one as a result since one and two once again have the exact same materials for this question. So they're asking us what could be true. Let's simply run through all five choices. Only center two has glass. No, both one and two will have to have glass since one and two are going to have identical types of materials in this layout. So for that reason we can eliminate A off the bat. For the same reason we can eliminate C since there's no only one or only two for this question. If something's on one, it's on two and vice versa, specifically when they both have three types of material. Additionally, we know, of course, that P is not going to go on either one and two. P is going to go specifically on three. So we get rid of A and C off the bat with that information. We also know that we can eliminate E since whatever's on one is also going to be on two. If one had wood, two would also have to have wood. So we're now down to B and D. Only center three has newsprint, or only center three has tin. Well, if only center three had newsprint, that means that neither center one nor center two could have newsprint. So let's just play with, around with this for a moment. This becomes problematic because of the conditional regarding wood and newsprint. Whatever has wood 
will have both void and newsprint. So if not if only three is having newsprint, that means that neither one nor two is going to have newsprint. And if they're not going to have newsprint, then they're not going to have wood either due to the counterpositive of this rule right here. If wood requires both wood and newsprint, if you don't have newsprint, then you must not have had wood since having wood would have required you to have newsprint. So now we see the buildup of these restrictions. Neither one nor two could have any of P, N, or W. And since there are only five variables in the game here, and we've already used up G, what else could one and two have? All that would be left for them to have would be the variable T. The problem is the questions then here required that we have exactly three types of material at each of these centers. But right now, due to these restrictions, we're only going to be able to have two G and T on centers one and two. So having center three be the only center where we ever have newsprint results in a conflict with the rules. So therefore, it's impossible and we can eliminate B, leaving D is our answer for number 21. And just to be thorough, I'll take a quick look at D, only center three recycling tin. So if center three were the only place we had tin, that would mean that we could not have tin on either one or two. So we can't have either P or T on one and two. We've got G there. So in order to reach three on each of these centers, one and two are both going to have wood and newsprint. And that works out perfectly fine because we could still have N filling in the remaining space on center three. So it all works out perfectly fine, no problems. That's why D works for number 21. Next, number 22. If center three has glass, then what must center two have? Well, if three has glass, then three is not going to have plastic. And since three doesn't have plastic and two can't have plastic due to our initial inference, this means that center one is going to have to have the only plastic of the game. And since whatever's on two will also be on one, we can infer that we're going to have three variables on center one in order for these two things to fit on center one as well. And so we know that two is going to have exactly two types of materials and center one is going to have exactly three types of materials so we can cap those off. And we don't really know whether center three is going to have two or three, it's open-ended. So they're asking us what must center two have? Well, we know center two is not going to have P and we also know that center two is not going to have G since if center two had G, center one would also have to have G but it can't due to the fact that P and G conflict from our initial rule for this game. If it's not going to have P or G, what does that leave? We get rid of G, get rid of P for a moment, that leaves N, T, N, W. So those are the three variables that center two could potentially have. Now, there are a few different potential combinations that might result from that. We could have N and T, we could have N and W, or we could have T and W, simply speaking broadly. However, there's a problem with this. If we have W, we have to have W and N in the same column, in the same center. So the third possibility I listed here, W, T, T and W, violates that because it has W, yet it doesn't have N. So that's an invalid possibility. We'll get rid of that. These are the two things that we could potentially have in center two. So either we'll have T and N in center two, or we'll have N and W in center two. Those are the two different possibilities for what could go in center two. Either of them is fine, it's open-ended. Now they're asking us what must center two have? Well, what's common to both of these? It's not T because we have T here, but not there. And it's not W because we have W here, but not there, so N. N is the variable that's common to both of those possibilities for center two. So therefore N, B, is our answer to number 22. Finally, number 23, if center one is the only center that recycles wood, so once again, if center one has something unique that center two does not have, that tells us that center one is going to have three variables and center two will have to have exactly two. Because if they both had exactly two variables, then they would have to be identical to do the rule that whatever's on two will also be on one. Now we know that if something has W, it also has N. So if one has W, one will also have N. So which means that two is also gonna have to have N in order for whatever is on two to also be on one. Now, since two doesn't have P, one's also not gonna have P since there simply isn't room for it. We need to reserve this space here for whatever goes here as well. So if we're not gonna have P on those, 
that means that P is going to have to go on center 3. And if center 3 has P, then center 3 is not going to have G due to the rule that P and G are never in the same center. So if G is not on 3, that means that G will have to be on centers 1 and 2 in order for it to go somewhere. Now, that leaves the variable T unplaced, but there's no room for it on 1 and 2. Therefore, T will have to go on 3. So 3 has at least P and T. Maybe it has something else as well. We don't really know. But So it's a little bit open-ended, but 1 and 2 are firmly defined. So they're asking us now, what could be a complete and accurate list of materials that go on one of these centers? They don't even specify which one here. So it could be GN, it could be WNG, it could be PT, or it could be PT as well as something else. Of course, I wouldn't approach the question in this way. I would simply look through the choices, but I want to give you a sense of how you could go about it and also give you a sense of how restricted the possibilities here really are. If we look through the choices, we automatically see choice A works. P and T, we have it right there in center 3, so we're good. Just to quickly scan through the others, WN, we have WN on center 1, but we also have G there. So choice B could be a partial list, but it's not a complete list, so B is gone for that reason. Looking at C, T, and N, doesn't ever happen. Whenever we have T, we also have P, but choice C is not listing that, so C is gone. Looking at D, W, G, that's a partial list for what happens on 1, but it's ex excluding N, so that's unacceptable. And then looking at E, G, and T, that never happens. In the scenarios with G, we don't have T, and the scenario with T, we cannot have G. So E is gone as well, leaving A for 23.